What is up ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are all having an amazing day. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review over the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 10s. Now, I am super excited because this is my first pair of Adidas shoes in over four years since the Adidas Boston 6s. Some of the shoes I've worn over the past couple years include the Nike Infinity Runs, the Nike Infinity React 2s, the Nike Pegasus 37s and 38s, and also the Hoka Mach 4s. Now, Nike has always been the top of the line the top brand for running in pretty much every single sport there is. And now, obviously, I think it's time to switch. Adidas is a great shoe with a wide variety of different shoes that I can choose from. To start off, we're going to talk about some of the specs of the shoe. And then after I talk about that, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I actually like about the shoe and what I actually don't like about the shoe and what I think they can change about the shoe. So basically, I got this shoe about a month ago. These are the Adidas ID Zero Boston 10s. They are a pretty looking shoe. Now, this is actually a girl's colorway. And one of the reasons that I chose this shoe is because it has carbon rods in it and my friend actually recommended it to me. Now obviously these rods consist of carbon which is in all of Nike's racing shoes. Now the difference between these and Nike's is that Nike has a full length carbon fiber plate. Now Adidas does things a little bit different obviously. There's five rods in the bottom. You can actually see three if you just look at the bottom but there are five rods that consist of basically the whole entire shoe that go up. And the purpose of these rods are supposed to mimic your metatarsal, so it's supposed to be good for, you know, the overall mechanics of running. It's supposed to help you go forward and basically give you a little extra spring, just like the carbon fiber plate in the Nike shoes. They do have the Light Strike Pro phone, which is a super, super lightweight phone and super responsive, kind of like Nike Zoom X phone, but I would say a little bit more durable like Nike React phone. This shoe has five energy rods. It has Light Strike and Light Strike Pro cushioning. The midsole drop is 8.5 millimeters with the stack height at 39.5 at the max, and then 31 at the lowest. It has continental rubber on the outsole and you can obviously see that on the bottom of the shoe because it's labeled continental. And the exact color of this shoe is the Halo Mint Cloud White Sonic Ink. Now one thing that actually really stuck out to me about what I just read is the stack height. It has a 39.5 millimeter stack height and if any of you guys know other running shoes, you know that the next percents are a 40 millimeter stack height. So Basically, the difference between this and the next percent stack height is only a half of a millimeter, which is super, super, super small. So it's pretty crazy, you know, seeing this shoe. As you look at it, you really don't think it's as big as the next percent, but it actually is. Now we're gonna talk about some of the things I like about the shoe. So the main thing that I like is the overall structure and mechanic of the shoe. I just like how they put the shoe together. Everything is super comfortable. The tongue is super, super thin and super comfortable. These shoelaces never come untied. The Light Strike Pro is put together right on top of the Light Strike phone. And on the bottom, you obviously have the Continental tread and then sandwiched in between all of that you have the five energy rods. This makes a great shoe to do all of your weekly and basic miles in. Now this shoe I did a long run a couple weeks ago. It was a really good long run. I think I got in about 14.6, 14.7 miles in. And after my long runs I'm always super super tired. My legs are super super sore and honestly I put these things on for that long run and my legs felt great after I could keep walking around. Now there is no secret that this is a very durable shoe. You're going to be able to log a lot of miles in these shoes. I'm guessing somewhere between 400 to 600 miles. I would be surprised if they could last a little bit longer than 600 miles, but I guess, you know, I'll find out. So far, I have about 250 miles in them, and I continue to keep putting miles in them pretty much every single day. Now, the tread is actually really good on these shoes. I've actually done some trail running in them. I've done some running on super, super thin gravel. I've done some running on mulch. I've done some running on mud and sand. And on top of that, the structure of the shoe also helps with the turns and the twists of trail running. It's going to keep your foot locked in just like you want it. And onto the bad stuff. There's basically only two things that I really don't like about the shoe, and only one of them is pretty much relevant. But basically, the first thing that I don't like about these shoes is the breathability. Now, Nike shoes, which I'm used to, have really, really good breathability, and your feet basically never get too warm or hot in Nike shoes, no matter how the weather is outside. But these shoes, it doesn't take a very hot day to make your feet super, super sweaty and super hot. Oftentimes, after I'm done running in these shoes, I take off my shoes and my socks are pretty much soaked. So yeah, that's one thing that I think Adidas needs to work on. And then I guess the second thing that, you know, I'm really not used to is wearing a shoe that's this heavy now. It's not heavier than most shoes, but it is heavier than most Nike shoes. But obviously, it's a new shoe to me with a new structure, so it's definitely going to be a little different. You know, some people that didn't come from Nike shoes, they're going to feel like these shoes might be super lightweight for them, or they might just be average. This shoe weighs exactly 9.25 ounces per shoe, and Nike Pegasus 38, which is Nike's newest Pegasus until next month, weighs only 8.2 ounces per shoe. So over an ounce lighter per shoe is a big difference for me since I'm used to wearing those shoes that are a little bit lighter. And like I said, that's not a huge deal, but I did notice it the first couple times I wore this shoe. And one more thing that I want to add that I should have added in the beginning of the video is that these shoes retail for 140 bucks. Now, 140 bucks is not bad at all considering some of the prices that, you know, some of Nike's newer shoes and some of Hoka's newer shoes actually cost. You can actually get up to the high 200s, you know, for a couple different shoes like the Nike Alpha Flies, the Nike Next Percents that have totally different purposes. But yeah, 140 is not crazy for 
a shoe. But these shoes are old enough that they actually drop the price now. You can go straight to the website right now. I put a link down in the comments below. But you can get these shoes for exactly 98 bucks. I was actually able to snag these shoes for only 90 bucks, which is a huge steal. So 98 bucks is definitely a pretty sweet deal, considering the fact that they're normally 140. Now that's gonna be it for my first video about an Adidas shoe. It was super fun making this video, and honestly, I can't tell you guys whether to get these shoes or not. All I can say is do your own research and you know find out which shoe is best for you. You can go in stores, try shoes on, talk to some of the people who actually work at these stores. I know Fleet Feet has like a 60 day return policy and Dicks might even have a longer one than that. But go, you know, do your research, get the shoes, try them on, and you know, see which shoe is best for you. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give me a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe and stay blessed. Peace.